Hi everyone, this is Michael, G0POT, and today I'd like to bring you a short review of the MTR, the Mountain Topper Radio, produced by LNR Precision. So let's get this little thing unwrapped. So in my pouch here, I have a little baggie containing the battery, headphones, and uh, aerial leads. And this is the MTR radio by LNR Precision. So what is the MTR? Well, it's a simple but very well featured three band CW only trail friendly transceiver. It covers 20, 30 and 40 meters and it has an output of about two and a half watts and a receive signal bandwidth of about 500 hertz. So perfect for CW. There's no tuning knob, no volume control, and there's no built-in battery, no built-in tuner, and no signal meter. This is dead simple. And as you can see, I've fixed a Palm Pico paddle to the side of mine. So let's look at the physical attributes. The radio weighs just 125 grams. It's 97 by 69 by 26 millimeters in size. And that's including all the sticky out bits like buttons and the aerial socket. If you want to get a real feel for the size and weight of this, just grab a pack of playing cards. It's, it's physically about the same size and uh, only a little bit heavier than a normal pack of cards. The case is two part aluminium. Uh, so held together with screws on either end. Not great if you want to uh, use a magnetic key like the uh, palm paddle, but fortunately the screws on the end line up perfectly with a palm pico paddle base. All the external connections are on the back edge of this transceiver. The aerial connector is an RCA rather than the more ubiquitous BNC. Uh, a BNC might fit in there if you want to retrofit one, but it's very tight inside the radio. And actually the RCA is quite handy if uh, you find yourself in an emergency trying to connect an aerial, because you can simply push uh, the main aerial into the RCA and twist uh, a reflector around the outside. So it's easy for retrofitting in the field. The radio can be powered from a 6 to 12 volt DC supply. And LNR have chosen to use the less common uh, power connector, the 4mm by 1.7mm power socket that's used on the FT817. A standard 3.5mm stereo key jack supports the paddles with the MTR's built in Kia. But if you wish to use a straight key, you're going to need to fit either a mono plug to the key or have a spare mono plug that you can plug into the radio while you're powering up. So the radio uses the type of key that's plugged in to select the type of key that it thinks you want to use. The final connection on the back panel is a standard 3.5mm stereo headphone socket. As I've already mentioned, there's no volume control of any kind on the MTR, but I, I did find the volume sufficient for normal use. I find the side, side tone a little bit loud compared to the receive audio, but in practice it's not too bad and if needs be you can just slip the headphones off of your ears very slightly while sending and then pop them back on when you're receiving. Okay, let's have a look at the controls of the MTR. As a trail friendly radio, the MTR has all the controls on the front or top of the case uh, and this makes it easier to access everything. Over here on the left are the band change switches. Um, there's three of them with three positions, so 20, 30 and 40 metres, and you need to switch each of them into position. When you change band, you hear the band that you've selected enunciated in Morse code as a single digit, either 2, 3 or 4, and you also see the band displayed as a, as a 2, 3 or 4 digit in the single digit display. On the right hand side of the mountain topper is the basic on off switch and along the bottom are the four main control buttons. The two right hand buttons are used to tune the radio and the whole of the 20, 30 and 40 meter amateur bands are available. Uh, if these buttons are pressed momentarily the tuning is moved either up or down by 50 hertz increments. If you press the button and hold it, it scans uh, with a tuning speed of about 700 hertz per second. Um, so it takes about one and a half seconds to tune through one kilohertz um, and therefore about a minute and a half to sweep through the CW section on 20 meters. The speed's about optimum for covering the desired bandwidth swiftly whilst easily being able to hear and stop on top of a CW signal without overshooting. Pressing the function button briefly triggers a display and audio enunciation of the current frequency. Only the kilohertz and hundred hertz 
figures are displayed. So for instance for 14059.5 kilohertz the radio will display a digit at a time 059-5. Pressing and holding the function button for less than a second provides access to three functions through the other three buttons. So you're selecting function and the down arrow selects tune and the tune control enables a constant carrier to be turned on and off using the paddles to aid in tuning using an external ATU for instance. The radio provides some level of protection by initially attenuating the output power I found to about 300 milliwatts on my transceiver uh, when you first hit tune and if you carry on tuning it gradually builds the power up to about 1 watt. Pressing the function button for less than a second followed by the RIP button gives you access to direct frequency entry. And when this is selected the radio accepts frequency inputs using the paddle using the same four digit format that it uses uh, when you request it to display or send the frequency. Pressing the function and up button displays the battery voltage allowing the operator to monitor the current battery level which is very useful if you're using uh, things like LiPos which can be damaged if they're run too flat. There are three key memories available by tapping the KM key followed by one of the other three keys. Each can store about 63 characters and memory 3 is able to uh, be used in a beacon or repeat fashion to carry on calling CQ and then can be interrupted by tapping the key. Pressing and holding the function button for a little longer reveals some more options. Firstly you can change the key speed, this is enunciated with the letter S. And then you just use the paddle, left and right paddle, to speed up or slow down the key. If you hold the key function key a little longer you can modify the key memories and that's enunciated with the letter M. And finally if you hold the function button for a little bit longer still you'll hear the letter P enunciated and that allows you to program your user preferences. Things like the default key speed and the default starting frequencies on the 20, 30 and 40 meter bands. The radio has the all important receive incremental tuning RIT option uh, it has a range of about plus or minus 1.5 kilohertz and to give you some kind of idea as to where you are in respect to the receive frequency um, you'll see something displayed in the seven segment display uh, and that gives you a, a visual indication of how far off the fundamental uh, receive frequency you are. Right, let's get this radio set up and uh, connected to an antenna and see what we can hear. OK, let's uh, just preview the setup before we uh, fire this up. I'm using a little 460 milliamp uh, LiPo battery, which is more than enough for this transceiver. I'm using a dongle to connect the antenna rather than an RCA to BNC adapter, because that's quite long and um, puts a little bit too much leverage on the radio. I've plugged in my Pico paddle, which is attached to the side of the radio. And finally, I've got my headphones plugged in. So let's fire up this puppy and see what it sounds like. OK, when we turn on we get a 3 displayed and sent in CW to indicate that we're on 30 metres. And if I use the paddles we can hear the volume and quality of the side tone. Let's use the tune keys by pressing and holding to tune down and we can immediately hear a station. If you want to check what frequency we're on we can just tap the function key and we hear the last four characters of the frequency enunciated and also displayed on the little single character display. So that's 10128.1 kilohertz. If you want to use the memory key, we just tap KM followed by one of the other buttons for one of the three memories. And if I tap the paddle, it stops the automatic sending. If we press and hold the function key, we hear an S enunciated and now we can change the speed of the keyer. We hold the dit side of the paddle to slow the keyer down 
and we hold the DAR side of the paddle to increase the key speed. If we press function and hold it for a little longer, we hear M enunciated, and the closest thing to an M they could manage uh, is displayed in the single character display. And this gives us access for programming our Kia memories. Finally, we can press and hold function for a little longer still until we hear a P enunciated for programming. And now the radio will store the current Kia speed and starting frequencies for each band. If we press RIT, you'll see a zero appear to indicate that your transmit and receive frequencies are the same. And as we tune down, you can see the visual display gives you an indication of how far away from the, uh, the central frequency you are. And when we get back to transmit and receive frequency being the same, we get a zero displayed. Just press RIT again and it turns it off. Now if I select 40 meters, it's a little bit more busy here and we'll have a little tune down and see what we can hear. Okay, there's some louder signals. Let's carry on tuning down and look for some co-channel signals to uh, look at how the filtering works. Here I'm using a mix of pressing and holding the tune button and just tapping it to search for and tune in on signals. And if I hold down the tune button, we can carry on all the way down to the bottom of the 40 meter band and you can hear the end of band signal. And there it is. And if we tap the function key, we should see that we're on 000 0. If I switch the unit off and switch back on again, you'll see that the radio starts back at my preferred frequency, which I've programmed into the unit. This is at 7032.5 kilohertz, although you'll see it displayed 036 kilohertz rather than uh, the dash five. Uh, and that's because my MTR is roughly 100 hertz off frequency. So to wrap up, fantastic little rig. I absolutely love it. It is genius. Uh, receive current is about 36 milliamps and on transmit depends on the battery and it depends on the band but about 400 milliamps to give about two and a half to three watts output with a, a 12 volt supply so it works really well on this tiny little lipo battery this is obviously pretty well adapted for portable applications where the weight and size are really really important and where typically you find a free frequency and cool rather than tuning around Many people seem to use the MTR with an external speaker, but actually I've found it absolutely fine with simple headphones. Uh, it helps if you have a volume control or for headphones that you can slip on and off the ear slightly to manage differences in the side tone versus the received audio. Being such a lightweight solution, being able to operate from very small batteries, this makes it ideal for backpackers and so tractivists, which is probably why it's called the mountain topper. For me, this is an absolute keeper and I'm using it on a weekly basis. Okay guys, I hope you found that a little bit useful. If you're thinking about uh, purchasing a mountain topper, LNR Precision have them available uh, occasionally. They're making them in batches, I think, and they're about $250. Uh, plus you'll have to pay import duty here in the UK. So it probably works out at about £250 in total. I hope you found that useful. 73 is from G0 POT.